Hello and welcome to my Let's Play Endless Legends. I am Aya Niranma and I'm first time here with a um, webcam. And I will play today Endless Legends. It is um, was released uh, several weeks ago, about two weeks. And um, yeah, I had no internet in that time because someone in my uh, someone where I live has screwed up with that, so I only got internet again recently. So I'm a bit late, but I will play today Endless Legend. In this video, I will go shortly a little bit through these uh, through these empires and through my setting. In the next video, the Gameplay will actually start. Um, so, if you want to see the gameplay right away with the roving clans, so go on to the next video. The link should pop up somewhere in YouTube, and wish you a, wish you a lot of fun. I will have it. Well, I hope. Um, <clears throat> okay, first of all. I'm playing as the rowing clans. My reason for that is they look interesting. I think they look cool. Um, they seem to have interesting units in here. The dervish, some cavalry on it. They have the Kasai, some ranged cavalry on it. And the uh, Yermak. That seems to be um, just a strong cavalry on it. So lots of cavalry on it. And also the traits are very interesting. And in addition, before I will go through these traits a little bit, I haven't seen that many Let's Plays of the Rowing Clans. <coughs> um, there was a pre-release of this game, included in that were only the first four um, factions. Wild Walkers, the Broken Lords, the Walters and the Necrophages. So, these four are spread a lot, or let's say let's play of these are spread a lot. These four are a little bit less and I think I haven't seen that many Roman plants because a lot of ardent mages and dragon. Well they would be my first choice too uh, let's be honest. I mean she is just cool. Oh yeah. But let's try with him. What does he have? Nomadic cities. You can relocate cities and uh, also distribute the districts to it. That seems to be pretty interesting, you want to test that out. Then brace yourself. Um, less city upkeep during winter season. Very cool, brace yourself, winter is coming. And um beta bonus also winter season. So um let just they are less bad than the others during winter, since they are prepared. For the stars. Then um uh, transaction fees sounds interesting. Not really sure how that work. That really really work. Um, is the market ban option prevents a target prevents be a target of a market ban. Interesting. I haven't um, found out what market bans actually how they are done. Maybe we'll do in this game. Then have more life mercenaries and movement. That's cool. Additional information in the marketplace, that's always good. Information is so good. Cannot declare war, that's a huge downside of them. Um, make trade, not war. The roving clans believe that warfare is only for desperate fools. They do not view it as a viable option. Um, yeah, since war interrupts traders and huge trading companies can go bankrupt, except they are the leader of the war and actually trading war goods, but I think they trade more different goods. Um, so not to be able to declare war on an AI that is leading the score can actually be uh, pretty painful since I may want to stop them. On the other side, at some point the AI will declare war on me anyway, so I will just have an army and wait for them to declare war on me and then conquer them. 
and commercial and research agreements are free. That's cool, so as soon as we can do them, we will do them. So I hope I get some friendly AIs. Oh, I made an 8 player map, so all the AIs will be in there, since these are 4 AIs. 4 um, factions. Then they have then there is the units, the the tooltip is too far south, okay fine. Then the mercenary. Well these are technologies and we see them when they start the game. This is actually in the quest. So I will see that also in game, so. Um yeah, I select them. Oh yeah, I should go through the other clans. Only short. Um, wild walkers, they are kind of um, elves with a lot of ferocity. Wild elves, you could say, the wild walkers. Um, they have these awesome basic units, a ranged unit that can do a lot of damage. Then they have a shaman, which I did not use a lot yet. And the Tane walker, who is quite tanky and also deals a lot of damage. Good unit, good melee unit. They um, have bonus with trees and anything with, with forests. So if you build cities in forests, they can be pretty powerful. They have good units. And tend to get a good production. Then the broken lords. They do not need food. They completely depend on money, on dust. They have several bonus to dust. Especially when they're in the in desert and on rivers, it's good to be for them, since there you get the most dust, except for animals, of course. Um, since they feed on dust, they need dust to grow, you pay them to grow. Then they got stalwarts, a tanky knight type unit, a rider, some cavalry guy, and the dust bishop, which I did not try out yet. But it seems to be a very interesting unit. It has some hypsiphon exhaustion. It seems to be some some supportive unit. Okay, then the Walters. Um they seem to be something of an average uh, type. They have some range, some, they have a bit more tanky units, they have always good armor it seems. Also, even the leader has a huge shield, it seems. Oh yeah, they have um, something, some teleport ability. They seem to be a little bit fut futuristic. Some um, science, some more resource. Oh yeah, they, are they get more resources, so we can equip them earlier and faster with better, better equipment. That's pretty good. And um, they make they tend to make less cities than some of the others, except for the cultists, uh, but better cities. They usually have pretty good cities, and they have good signs, it seems. And the necrophages, they are all out war. They cannot uh, make peace with people, they cannot make alliance, they are just cold war is their primary state. And they have cool units, so all bug type. The Forager, just a basic melee unit. The Necro Drone, that's a flying and fast unit. And the Proliferator, that can infest other enemy units with parasites. And when these parasite unit dies, then you get a free Forager after that. So you can, if you win a lot of wars with a forager in your army, you will get huge armies or a lot of troops. They can, um, they have some, they have the option to sacrifice population for happiness. I think that can be pretty cool. They lack food, but since they can go for happiness and yeah, they can still go with food if they put population. In it. They are a bit difficult with food. Let's say it like that. But. Uh, Think they are still viable. Your um, tile choose to settle your cities will just be a little bit different since you do not need you to get minus one from food. So all these tiles that give just one food and something else are not that good. But tiles that don't give anyway food are actually pretty good. 
so you get lots of other stuff that can put your population on producing food and build the buildings fast. And they have some health regeneration that sounds pretty handy. And some war bodies. So they are actually there for warfare. Yep. Then the Arden Mages. They have can cast spells. Their heroes can cast some cool spells. And um, they are science focused. They have a lot of possibilities to get more science. They can place down in their cities some pillars. These pillars cost dust, so spell casting costs dust, costs money. And it will increase their cities. Most probably the science output of, output of their cities. Maybe production, maybe something else. Then um, they have the Talsam Warlock. It's a melee unit that deals more damage the more it is that the more it is damaged, so kind of massive fist mage. I like him. Then the Zealot, that's a range caster. And a flying unit. I haven't tested out that yet, but it has it's quite a lot of damage and attack. Oh, and it has revived. That sounds very interesting. Got to play them at some point again. I only tried them a short time. Then we have the Rogue Clans, we're gonna play. The Draken, the Diplomatic Guys. Main victory type Diplomatic. Um, they have, um, they tend to settle at ruins, since ruins give more tile stuff for them, they give them diplomatic points. So their empire plans are usually ahead of the others. That's pretty cool, I played with them, successful, and I had a lot of fun. Um, yeah, that's it, more science and more diplomacy from ruins. Then, um, unlock one. Empire plans are unlocked earlier, that's cool. And then... Um, oh yeah, they, they know everyone from the very beginning. That's why sometimes this, these guys pop up from the very beginning and seem to already discover you. Because they already have discovered everyone. So they can start diplomacy with them from the very beginning. That's pretty cool. And they also have cool units. It's a Dragonling, some fierce warrior. The Wyvern, it's a melee dragon. And my favorite one, the Ancient. It's a range dragon. He does not hit the well, but when he hits, he hits hard. And he's flying, and he's ranged. I got six of these guys well upgraded and slaughtered. Every empire with them. So cool. Dragons. It was always fun to search for them when I did not remember where I placed them and to say, Where are my dragons? Okay, and now the cultists. They tend to be, in my opinion, they are the Venice of this game. For those who know C5, Venice, huh? For those who don't, these, these guys. They can only build one city, which is their first city. They build their first settler. Because they cannot build settlers. They have only the very beginning settlers. Afterwards, they can... They can um, conversation. They can convert villages, but only from minor factions. If they conquer a city of another faction, they burn it. It will be erased immediately. That seems pretty bad I, um, I don't I think they're very cool but I didn't think they're not that good because or at least on big maps I mean consider I would play as them and would have to burn all his cities burn all our cities burn all his cities and so on to win I mean until I have burned her cities this guy will have built again cities in some place I burned them already. so duh and they say, okay, supremacy. Maybe I cannot burn capital cities. I'm not sure how this works. I will try them out at some point, but not now. Too high of a risk to have some weird gameplay there. But they seem to be interesting. They have interesting units. A preacher. They start with a support unit. Very weird. They have this fanatic that seems to be very strong and... Uh, oh, a fast unit. Cool. And the Nameless Guard, ranged units always powerful. It's, I mean, it's like in Civilization. Bowmen are just overpowered. 
or just again or at least I no bowmen are overpowered. Difficult to um to counter. Oh and yeah they have pretty cool heroes. They can uh, make in my opinion the best the best governors. That's pretty cool. And they have um lots of special bonus to their one cities that can build powerful buildings which is not as powerful since they can only build it in their capital since they only have that city but so it's allowed to be powerful very interesting I'm through so I will start um, the gameplay kind of now <laughs> 